Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, the climate guy setting the record straight about climate. This video is titled, Climate, the Data and Fact-Free Science. Newsweek ran an article this week, Which White Christmas Will Be Our Last? Snow in December may soon be history, depending on where you live. But three days later, Pennsylvania set their all-time snowfall record. Data from the Rutgers University Global Snow Lab shows that December snow cover has been increasing in the Northern Hemisphere for 50 years and has been at record levels in the past decade. So December snow cover isn't decreasing as Newsweek claimed, rather it's increasing at a rather remarkable rate. And Christmas Day temperatures have been plummeting in the United States for the last 90 years. They peaked in 1955, which was an incredibly warm Christmas. The average maximum temperature across the entire United States was 54 degrees that day. More than half of the United States was over 60 degrees on Christmas Day 1955, and was 80 degrees in Virginia. The coldest Christmas Day in the United States was in 1983, when afternoon temperatures averaged an incredible 16 degrees. We're seeing similar temperatures like that this year, with the entire eastern two-thirds of the United States in a deep freeze. The polar jet stream is making a very deep dip, which is bringing Arctic air all the way down into the deep south in Florida. In fact, there's snow forecast for Florida on New Year's Day. That would be the second time that's occurred this winter. This is exactly the same pattern as occurred during the extremely cold winter of January 1977. A large ridge of high pressure in January 1977 kept the west coast and Alaska very warm, while the eastern United States was extremely cold. In January 1977, it actually snowed in Miami. And Alaska was warmer than Florida in January 1977. National Geographic described 1977 as the year the weather went wild. Icicles on Florida oranges, overwhelming snowfalls in the Northeast, thus the U.S. staggered through the winter of 1976-77. By summer, a more serious crisis had gathered momentum. Parts of the nation were suffering the worst drought on record. Cold, snow, and drought. Sounds awful. During January 1977, Buffalo, New York, on the shores of Lake Erie, saw record snowfall, just as Erie, Pennsylvania is seen this year. The polar vortex in January 1977 was exactly like it is this year. And what did they blame it on? They blamed it on global cooling. Scientists have found other indications of global cooling. For one thing, there's been a noticeable expansion of the great belt of dry, high-altitude polar winds, the so-called circumpolar vortex. And look what the New York Times reported a year later. An international team of specialists has concluded from eight indexes of climate that there is no end in sight to the cooling trend of the last 30 years. And then they said, a gradual increase in area of the northern circumpolar vortex. So the identical weather, which is currently blamed on global warming, 40 years ago climate experts blamed it on global cooling. There's no evidence to back the idea that white Christmases are going to disappear in the United States. December snow cover is increasing, not decreasing. We have more white Christmases than we used to have. And Christmas Day temperatures have been declining in the United States, not increasing. The warmest Christmas in the United States occurred in 1955. And let's remember where the term White Christmas came from. That was from Irving Berlin's 1954 musical, which went by that name, White Christmas. The storyline of White Christmas is that they were in Vermont on Christmas Eve. It was 60 degrees and there was no snow, and they were dreaming of a White Christmas. There's zero evidence to back up the idea that White Christmases are going to disappear in the United States. In fact, the data shows the exact opposite. December snow cover has been increasing, and Christmas temperatures have been declining. We're seeing more White Christmases, not less. The Newsweek story is fairly typical of climate reporting. It has no basis in fact, and the data actually shows the exact opposite of what the story claims. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.